Now I know you guys didn't think I would start this video without shouting out the brand. The Spring Summer 2020 Collection, the third drop from the brand, is now available online. Some exciting products. I've pivoted the company slightly. Go check those out. You won't be sorry. You won't be sorry? Check us out. We got some exciting stuff. Again, that's www.displacedbydesign.com. What's up, YouTube? It's your mother's favorite, William, and I'm back with a haircut. I'm also back with another video as well. All right, so I'm starting to notice the correlation between the type of questions you guys ask me in the comments. Uh, dating all the way back to my first finish line video, it seems like most of you guys want to know how you can get hired at a place like Finish Line or a place like Foot Locker, Champs even, any, any type of retail sneaker store. In today's video, I wanted to offer you guys a step-by-step -step way, almost guaranteed way to get hired into a store like Foot Locker. Now, I know you guys don't really care you guys don't care too much about me as a person, but I do have another job. I do have a full-time job. I mean, hey, maybe you guys want to get hired into a sales job. Maybe you guys want to be inside sales reps. I don't know. I mean, it's cool. It's a cool gig. It pays the bills. Maybe you guys want to start a clothing brand. I did that as well. And I just started another company. Maybe you guys want to produce podcasts. Or maybe you guys just want to work at a place like Finish Line and a place like Foot Locker. Either way, hey, I'm cool with it, man. I'm getting this bread. I only want you guys to do the same. All right, so before I get into the first step, you really want to make sure you have a really tight and, and put together resume. That's going to be big. Again, that's big for any job. You want to make sure that your resume is neat and it looks good and it's buttoned up and it's, it's in a good font. Uh, you, your sentences are correct. There's no fragments. You're spelling things correctly. Make sure you get your name right as well. A lot of y'all, I didn't see some resumes where people don't know how to spell their own name. You do got to make sure that your resume is put together neatly. And then once you do all of that, the first step really is just going online on the career site and finding the right store in the right position for you. So with that first step being going on to the career site, if you're coming into a retail job with no experience, Nine times out of 10, you're going to want to apply to, as, a, as a stock or a sales associate, um, especially with a place like Foot Locker. You just you want to get in the door part time. You just want to get your foot in the door from there. You learn more about the company. You learn more of, of the day to day on the job. And then, you know, career opportunities are endless for you. But you definitely want to find a position that matches your availability and your experience. Subsequently to that, I mean, you don't really have to have experience to work at a place like Foot Locker. Uh, you, you just don't, um, you know, it's a retail job. So they're not looking for uh, sales associate, part-time sales associates that have been working in retail for 10 plus years. It's just, I mean, that's rare to come by. I mean, it's, it's nice. So like with me, when I applied to Foot Locker, I'd had five years experience, especially manager experience with Finish Line. So it just kind of made uh, my candidacy work for me. So again, once you do that first step going onto the career site and finding the job title, uh, you do want to make sure that you have open availability because that's going to be asked in the application itself. Then you want to apply. You want to actually click apply. Make sure you are applying to a store that's conveniently located uh, close to you. But once you do that, uh, you actually go through the application. You fill out the questions as, as honestly as you can. Some people can like sniff out when you're being fake or facetious on an application and you're just trying to talk yourself up. Most sneaker stores are gonna ask for you to do this like kind of assessment. So in that assessment, they're just gonna like gauge how you are as a person and your knowledge and customer service because a big part of any retail job is customer service and how you interact with other people. So just be honest on the application, uh, fill that out promptly, you know, do that within the day. Don't like fill it out halfway and return to it. If you have to do that, it's best that you just hold off on applying and wait until you can do it all in one sitting. You found the job, you filled out the application, your resume is nice, you were honest, you did the assessment. The next step is gonna be to follow up. After you've submitted the application, it's a simple phone call. You're just gonna call the store, you're gonna ask for the hiring manager or whatever manager is, uh, is working that day. And you're just gonna tell them your name and that you just applied and you're just checking the status of an application. It's simple. That's going to bring your name on their radar. They're gonna they're gonna sniff that out. They're gonna see that. If your resume is together and you were honest and answered those questions honestly and accurately and you seem like a good fit, the next step would be you actually getting a phone call to come in and interview in person. So this is a big question that I get asked a lot. What do I wear to the interview? When you actually go to the interview, it's a retail job again. So you're not going to be 
expected to show up super business casual. You don't need to wear a suit and tie. You don't need to wear, you know, a dress. Uh, really, you could just come flexing your style. Show your style. Show your personality through your clothes. I've always been more impressed with people mixing and matching their style coming into the store for an interview. They have a nice pair of shoes on. I mean, it's a sneaker store. So if you have a nice pair of sneakers on, and then you have some slacks or some jeans or some or some khakis or any type of you know dressier pant and then just a nice t-shirt that's cool that's dope you you get it you're here for a reason for an interview so first impressions matter but don't overdo it don't show up in a suit and tie you're not gonna get turned away but you will definitely get clowned in that stock room so the actual interview itself they they're conducted one of two ways you'll either get a one-on-one -on -one with uh one of the assistant managers or the hiring manager or you'll be sat down in a group interview. Take the time to thank them uh, for sitting down and interviewing with you. Leave a lasting impression, shake their hand, make eye contact. Uh, if you guys are walking the same way, which that happens a lot, uh, that's awkward. It's like, okay, this is a great interview, goodbye. And you guys are both walking the same way. That's pretty awkward. But if that is the case, you know what I mean? Just ask them about themselves. Like that's gonna like retail. So everybody's stressed out to the max working in retail. I do not care what they say. Retail is draining. It's exhausting, right? So if a manager's having a rough day, now he has seven interviews lined up, he or her has seven interviews lined up, that's that's a lot, man. They're not gonna really want to, to do that. So just ask them, you know, what was that the first interview? You know, leave a lasting impression, ask some follow-up questions, be yourself, don't be nervous. So you left the interview, you're feeling really good, you're walking out of the store, or maybe you went and shopped around some more. The next step would be get home, follow up. So you've done everything that you needed to do. You got your resume together. You found the position. You applied. You were honest and transparent and accurate on that resume, on that application. And then you followed up. You were like, hey, I just applied. You got the phone call for the interview. You sat through the interview. You made a good first impression. And then you made a, a good lasting impression and by shaking their hand, making eye contact, and just being yourself. Then you got home, you followed up. So now it's the waiting game. In the waiting game, this makes people nervous because they're like, man, I thought I had a really good interview, but I haven't heard anything back. You gotta be patient. I mean, you gotta give the managers time to sift through. I mean, if you if you did everything, knocked it out of the park, you're gonna be one of the first people to get a call. Um, if you don't, if you're one of the last, just be patient. They're just going through everyone's application. Nine times out of 10, the manager's gonna be like, okay, we're gonna make a decision by the end of the week. Uh, so you'll hear something by Friday. If you don't hear anything by Thursday, give them a call on Thursday and then give them another call on Friday. And if you did everything that I said here in this video and you still get passed up, that's okay. There are more stores. Go apply somewhere else. You know what I mean? Or try it again. If you guys have more questions, go ahead and ask. So again, this was your mother's favorite, William. Until next time, you won't be, you won't be upset. You won't be sorry. Go check those out. You won't be sorry. You won't regret. You won't regret it. I think I should have said that instead of sorry. Hmm.